Okay, we're in uh, Washington, D.C. at the moment here, and we've positioned ourselves by uh, the uh, speed info traffic monitoring uh, radar device that is sitting up here on the pole. And just like we saw in California, the, this device is operating on uh, 24.1 gigahertz, which is right smack at the K-band center. And uh, unlike the uh, monitoring devices in California, uh, this one is triggering every 15 seconds. So what we are doing is, you can see we're synchronized here, and uh, when we get to 30 seconds, you're going to be seeing an alert here with the Valentine for sure. And now we're going to demonstrate the relative characteristics of uh, three detectors here. We've got the Valentine again, which consistently alerts. We have an escort red line with uh, TSR turned off. And now we have a, uh, a Pro, a Whistler Pro 3600. And one of the purposes of this exercise is to demonstrate the relative quickness of uh, Whistler's filter modes uh, which can change the reactivity of the detector in basically what amounts to is about a hundred millisecond increments. Uh, there are uh, f uh, three or four filter modes, pardon me, on the, on the Whistler 3600. There is filter mode which is the default, filter one, and then there's filter two and filter three. And uh, the filter mode on K-Band is relatively quick, and it's right up there with the Valentine at about 250 milliseconds to 300 milliseconds, which is a quarter to a third of a second that it needs to see a radar a source before alerting, which is uh, quite a bit faster than uh, the Escorts and the Beltronics uh, M3 and M4 platform detectors with the exception of the STIR and the STIR Plus remotes, which can be configured in such a way that they can alert uh, to very brief uh, transmissions of uh, radar. So what we're gonna do here is just look at and observe. And there are varying reports from Speed Info uh, that these things can trigger anywhere from 250 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds, a half a second. And uh, given that the filter mode of the Whistler is around 250 to 300, uh, we can see here that it's uh, not catching every single one of these. Uh, and the Escort Red Line uh, is catching even less of them because uh, they require... Uh, longer durations of uh, radar, even as sensitive as the Escort Red Line is, uh, before alerting. Uh, it's important to note with the Whistler Pro 3600, if, if you were to test this or you, you know, to do this yourself, it, you must make sure that the GPS functions are turned off, because if they're on, the, uh, the detector has the ability to uh, employ different filtering modes at, at speeds, at varying speeds. So if you're stopped, it could, uh, you know, incorporate a filter that requires a longer duration uh, of radar before alerting. Another thing this video will demonstrate is the trailing alerts of these detectors. You can see the Whistler and the Valentine pretty much let go of the signal about three seconds, two to three seconds after the brief transmission occurs. And the red line uh, takes quite a bit longer, uh, upwards of uh, nine seconds, and we'll, s we'll see that in a few seconds. Uh, the red line missed this one, so we'll have to wait for the next sequence at uh, 5 minutes 30 seconds. There you go.
See the red line still alerting and at nine seconds it uh, releases it even though the uh, radar transmission ended. So the behavior of the red line appears very similar to the 9500IX in that it is uh, slow enough uh, for the purposes of reducing uh, falses that it doesn't even consistently alert to these brief transmissions and the Whistler seems to be doing a more consistent job the Valentine uh, hasn't missed one okay now we're gonna change the filtering mode of the Whistler Pro 3600 to uh, filter one and we'll see what effect it has on its alerting Okay, we're going to change the filter mode Menu. to filter 1, which will add about 100 milliseconds to their duration requirements of the uh, Pro 3600 before alerting. Okay, let's see how they behave now with uh, the Whistler set to uh, filter 1. So it appears that the uh, even the additional 100 milliseconds added to filter one still enables the Pro 3600 to alert to this radar device, uh, which could suggest that this uh, duration is upwards of uh, 500 milliseconds. Of course, there's going to be slight variances in time given the the location, you know, in the sweep pattern from a timing perspective, but as you can see, the Pro 3600 is still capable of alerting. I'm going to give it one more uh, look at it. At uh, 9.45, we should be getting an alert. Okay, now we're going to uh, switch to filter 2 mode, adding another 100 milliseconds approximately to the uh, to the responsiveness of the detector. Okay, we're going to Change the filter now to filter 2. Then we'll watch the behavior here. At some point we're expecting to cross a threshold where we'll slow the Whistler Pro 3600 down to the point that it won't uh, alert. I mean, that's the plan here. So far the Pro 3600 is not alerting.
and it's interesting, uh, that would come out to about 500 milliseconds plus any variance in uh, time with respect to its sweeping requirement. And in filter 2, that would be about 200 milliseconds plus uh, about 300, which would put us right at the uh, 500 millisecond duration. So, looks like these uh, speed info devices are set to trigger at uh, 500 milliseconds, a half a second, or uh, perhaps uh, slightly shorter. And as you can see, the Valentine only requires about a 250 milliseconds to alert, and that's certainly quick enough to see every one of these as, as it did in California against the 9500IX. And the red line uh, catches a, a certain number of them. Uh, and this is without TSR on. So it appears with filter 2, you can effectively get the same performance of Escort's TSR filter. Uh, it slows it down enough to uh, what appears to be completely filtering out the, these devices, which is a good thing for Whistler owners. The other nice thing about this is uh, when you can tailor the responsiveness of the radar detector in, in such fine increments, 100 millisecond in increments, it's much, much more of a fine tune, and you, you don't pay as much of a responsivity performance as you do with Escort's TSR filtering, and which may require up to nearly two seconds of radar transmission before alerting, which is uh, too broad, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, put yourself at risk of missing, I think, some bona fide uh, instant on, let alone quick trigger shots. Uh, you know, generally, instant on radar uh, can get a speed uh, well within a half a second. Okay, we're going to turn TSR on now on the red line, and uh, what I expect we're going to see is. The same behavior that we saw with the 9500IX, that it will completely filter out. These uh, transmissions. <laughs> 